Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. This where we will go. Nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. In the early days of the automobile, there were literally thousands of people or companies that tried their hand at making cars. It's reasonable to assume that each of these makers hoped for a successful future in their endeavors and that their makes of cars would stand the test of time. Unfortunately, the vast majority of these companies would not endure, dying out after a few years or maybe a decade or so. Yet the hope was always there, and that hope was reflected in the name of one of the great marks of automobiles, Sunbeam. So let's take a look at the man of hopes and success, John Marston. He was born in 1836 in Ludlow, England, the son of Richard and Mary. His father was a chemist by trade, and the family owned quite a bit of land in town. Thus, they were well off financially for the time. Richard also served as both a Justice of the Peace and the Mayor of Ludlow, so young John enjoyed both opportunities for a solid education as well as having family connections to help further whatever career he chose to pursue. He began his learning at St. Lawrence's Grammar School in Ludlow and later transferred to Christ Hospital School in London to complete his primary learning. These were quality schools, but John was not a particularly quality student. He was certainly an intelligent young man, but was more of a hands-on learner, and his academic record was mediocre at best. At age 15, rather than go to a college, his parents felt that he would have more success by learning a trade, and so his father placed him into an apprenticeship, first at Darby's Ironworks, but after a few months he was sent to Wolverhampton to complete his apprenticeship. In Wolverhampton was a company, Richard Perry, Son & Company, that made articles out of tin, boxes of various sizes, reusable cans, serving trays, and other such trinkets. Also, they used a process known as Japanning to beautify many of their creations. Japanning was a European way of copying the highly ornate and artistic enamel and lacquer work that was being imported from the Far East. It was at this company that John completed his apprenticeship, and he learned not only how to make metal products, but how to do them with both quality and beauty. He completed his apprenticeship at age 23 and, with some family money in hand, purchased a small Japanning company in 1859. He bought the company of Daniel Lester, whom had passed away about two years earlier. Located in Bilston, the company prospered under John's leadership and began to grow in both size and profits. He married Ellen in 1865, who would bear him ten children. His old teacher, Richard Perry, passed away in 1869, and two years later, John bought his company as well, making John Marston the largest Japaner in the region. Known collectively as the Jetto Works, John's company grew in product offerings as well, foot warmers, cookware, lamps, and also black enamel products. With the company now named John Marston & Company Limited, by 1881, it ballooned into a five-acre factory with over 80 employees producing more lacquer products than any other in Britain. However, by 1885, business was not so soaring. The demand for lacquer and enamel ware was in decline. Something had to be done. Though two of his children died very young, the remaining eight were well-disciplined and detail-oriented, after the example of their father and they also were all bicycle enthusiasts. John and Ellen took to them as well, and the Marston family would often go on recreational cycle tours, and some of the sons, particularly Charles, even raced them. The legend tells that John and his son Charles were out riding together when Charles urged him to completely retool the company into making bikes, and John agreed to do so. The first bicycle was completed in 1887. Keep in mind that he did own a Japanning company, and so this bike was finely filigreed in black enamel and gold leaf. Absolutely beautiful. His wife Ellen commented that it was dazzling. The sun just reflected from it in so many ways. And so she insisted that the new product be called the Sunbeam. By 1888, Sunbeam Cycles was born. 
making both bikes and trikes the pedal-powered machines produced by Sunbeam were in high demand, quickly gaining a reputation as being of the highest quality possible with a price tag to match. Anyone who was anyone in England wanted to have a Sunbeam, to the extent that not long after the turn of the 20th century, John sold off his Japaning business to focus on making bikes. But cars would be just around the corner. In the 1890s, John did experiment with some motorcycles and motor trikes, though he himself was not enthusiastic about them. But there was a young apprentice of John's, a Thomas Curriton, that was enthusiastic about them and had Mr. Marston's ear. He argued that a four-wheeled vehicle was much safer and came up with a true car design. They even set up a shop in the cycle works to make some experimental models. By 1900, Sunbeam had the tools and space to make cars. Yet it was not any of their designs that would become the first true production cars from Sunbeam, but rather the design of a local architect named Maxwell Maberly Smith. Now his design was to have the wheels in a diamond pattern one in front, one in back, and two on the sides. A single cylinder Dadeon engine of about three horsepower would power the thing and the body of the car was kind of like a sectional love seat stuck together backwards. The idea was that with the wheel pattern the car could not skid, though there's no record whether that particular feature was ever tested. As weird as this was, it enjoyed a bit of success with over a hundred of the model produced. It was apparent to John that the car would be the way of the future, and so he created the Sunbeam Motor Car Company in 1903. For the next six or so decades, Sunbeam would be responsible for making some of Britain's most successful and sought-after sports cars, family cars, trucks, and even aircraft engines. John Marston was an exacting and irritable man that had both hope and vision, and the company that he founded Sunbeam built cars that, like himself, became legendary. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.